saw a YouTube video of someone making an edge finder and I thought you know that that would be a fun little project to do um, so in this video you're gonna see what I went through to make this guy and at the end it kind of uh, didn't really jump far I thought now comparing and it works the same as the off-the-shelf store-bought one brown and sharp but uh, I did see Mr. Lipton's video on making one of these guys and he lapped the surface. So you'll see what I went through to make it and then I didn't record lapping it but uh, evidently part of the secret is you have to make the mating surfaces like glass and it does work um, you know I checked it against the DRO you find an edge with the off the shelf put this guy in there and it's beautiful so if you want to try to take on this kind of project the only piece of advice also that I want to give is you'll see in there I'm pulling this cap off for the spring um, don't hold the spring with your fingers and then let it go because I pulled the cap off grab the spring unhook the cap let it go and it hooked my finger and pulled it down all the way into the well as far as it could now the only way to get your finger out is you got to pull and it's gonna hurt so use a piece of wire I pull it up now and I shove a piece of wire through there and I use that to let the spring back down in so hope you enjoy the video see you next time not sure if I showed this edge finder in a video a long time ago it's trying to make a, a electronic edge finder but gave up wow look at that you can make these things pretty thin couldn't figure out how to attach a wire to the ball with a spring um, spot welder would have been good but didn't have one so this just kind of went in scrap drawer on complete incomplete project oh well this was going to be the thing for the spring and stuff so but in any case and this was uh, probably 1018 we made this out of so um, decided to make a super jump uh, what the heck you know <laughs> so this wasn't too hard to, to turn I got this pretty close to point two let's see what it, eh, how you hold all this yeah all right well ah there <laughs> I don't know if you can see it it's point two zero zero five so if I want it closer I can always sand it down that's two zero zero eight up at the top so the lay is a little bit off yeah five so if I hit something I should be within a little over point two tenths of a thou hopefully it's I gotta make sure it's not gonna wobble here so that 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 face is perpendicular I think to this whatever uh, oh this is yeah this appears stainless so a magnet does not stick to it so it won't get magnetized and I did thread down in there I plan on just cutting the head off taking this over to the d-bit grinder flat edges make a hook out of it so that the spring hooks on it so and I can make it I can also turn this face down further I've got quite a ways to make it just look nice if I wanted this small the question is do I want to leave this at a half inch or take it down to three-eighths to make it look like a super jump <laughs> actually I was thinking you know what what makes it a super jump what <laughs> Do you have to go three eighths on that or not? But um, the other thing thinking about is how am I going to hold the other end of the spring? Uh, I was originally thinking a screw, but then I'm going to wind up twisting this guy as I screw it in. If I make it just some kind of a 45 funnel and drop something in there, I'll never get it back out. So. Um, 
also what size to drill the hole. If this is going to be 3 eighths, that's got to be smaller than this. I think this was five and a half millimeter. I drilled that out with, lapped it. This is just as nice a finish as the brown and sharp edge finder I have. So it should work good, I hope. <laughs> this will be interesting. So I'm still just thinking about this part and what I want to do. Well, that didn't take a whole lot to do. Hard to get this camera in close. I hope it stays in focus. But uh, yeah, you just take it, grind, rotate 180, grind. That way I know I'm on center. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Goes right in there. It's pretty nice. And this guy would be, I like this guy because the point is in the middle. I'm not sure whether shifting this off center or forces any force off center is going to affect the edge finder and the snap but so now it's just a matter of drilling a hole and then i think i'm just going to file out make it a hook because this looking at this guy and where the hoop is it's almost double so it would be hard to just feed it on there but uh so a little bit further it's kind of i like the grinder that grinder is really nice to do work with a couple of videos ago i showed uh, these tri-point drill bits for drilling stainless this is the one that i use to drill the major hole if i can tilt it in here and I was curious, I wanted to see what it looked like, you know, how did it hang on. So you can see, yeah, the coating didn't really come off of it. I mean, it's pretty good. But I was looking at it under a magnifying glass and going, yeah, something's funky here. So I went under the stereoscope to look at it. Um, I forgot what the magnification is. But one corner, the teeny little corner is chipped away. The other corner was fine, but, and I can't see it here with just <laughs> naked eye, but there's a chunk missing up in here. And look, and the other side was fine. So, um, it was still cutting when I finished. So I guess one corner is doing the cutting and the other surface here is doing the cutting. But looking at it really closely, it, um, the, it's all bumpy where the piece broke out. Almost like they uh, hardened this guy but didn't temper it. It was brittle. It looks like a you know a brittle kind of fracture coming off of it. But then I thought, all right, well, this is the drill bit that I did um, the hole for the threading with. It's a five millimeter, right? Was it five? Where's the, do, 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 yeah, five millimeter. This guy's perfect. So I don't know whether this was just a bad bit or what, but this guy, looking at it under the stereoscope, everything is absolutely perfect, sharp, clean. And he went in pretty far to do this hole in here for threading. Yeah, and everybody, boy, you want to talk about threading stainless. That is not an easy thing to do. You got to just barely inch back up, inch, fraction go forward back up action and I did use you know the tap magic uh, fluid on it I don't think it makes any difference but I just wanted to share that on these uh, drill bits so time will tell me um, how they're gonna work I know they're gonna work just fine on steel stainless is just really tough to do this is the other half of the edge finder which I gotta drill all the way through but boy, it is a pain because when I started drilling it, it just wants to go off center. So I messed that up, messed that side up. So what I finally wound up doing that seems to be working is a center drill. Just barely makes a little mark in the top. Switch that out and I went to a drill hog 1 8 bit go down in there a little bit cuts nicely stayed on center but i got to use the fine feed fine down feed on it and just barely go a little bit at a time with lots of cutting fluid 
and I'm using the drill hog fluid too. It's nice stuff. Then now I'm at three sixteenths, and um, I'll probably try to get all the way through with it, and then a quarter inch. So it seems to be working, but boy, you just got to really take your time so that it stays on center. Very close with this guy. Zoom out so you can kind of see this guy. Started, you know, like I said, with an eighth inch bit bigger. That's the quarter inch hole there. And then this is to match this guy. So, and I lap the faces. Eventually here I need to make sure I don't have wobble or anything in this. I shouldn't, but I'll have to put this in a collet and then reface that to make sure this is all true. But that feels correct. I like the mating surfaces. This will just go in here, fits nicely. And I figured I'll just make a little cap that, you know, I can pull it out, attach a spring, let it go, and it sits on the top so I can pry it back out to get it apart if I want to. So that'll be nice. Um, so, yeah, and I still have to drill this hole and make a hook out of this thing. So that should be really easy to do in the lathe. And I just wanted to follow up with these bits. I had said one of them was all messed up. I uh, forgot which ones I used. I used three of them, though. This was the final hole. I used one of these a lot. It's close to a quarter inch. The bit's perfect. So, and I used one of these guys, too. And it's perfect. So, evidently, I think this was just came out of a lot or something that just wasn't hardened right or something but so um you know look interesting the colors the dye or whatever is different that's darker than that that's way dark whatever um so i just have one bit that's messed up the rest uh, the other two guys hung in there all the way through so i'm pretty pretty happy with that and boy it does get hot but that's a lot of drilling stainless, let me tell you. Well, this is it, and it's not working exactly as I thought. Uh, in a minute, I'll take it out, and I'll take it over to the bench here and talk a little bit more about it. But So, yeah, you can see it's wobbling. And I can come in, and it does start straightening out. But then at one point when it jumps, there, it just jumped. I don't see any super jump to this thing. Still not jumping. There, it just moved. So I'm not sure what the secret is, but let me take it over to the bench. All right, what did I learn or figure out? Um, this, should be as long as the off-the-shelf ones because there's a lot of mechanical advantage here so I haven't shortened this yet and probably not going to um, the other thing is I was surprised when I very first tried it the tip was wobbling so I had to take it apart put this in the lathe resurface that resurface this piece and I was thinking, you know, if you're slightly, you know, the head is slightly tilted or something, all you're doing is making a, like a cone in, in here, in this surface. If you went completely across it, then, <clears throat> yeah, you're making an angle. So I only went in to just surface it, both, both pieces here. I didn't go completely across. Uh <coughs> <coughs> hey, excuse me. The other thing was, <coughs> hey, um, it takes a lot of spring power <laughs> to do it. That first spring was way, way too weak. So I've got a lot of force here. I was feeling the off-the-shelf one. And mm, let me stop for a minute. I right, get over my coughing attack here, drink some water. Um, so, I don't know. Uh, this is not an easy project, in my opinion, for what I've done here. Um, oh, yeah, this surface has to be like glass 
because if it's not and there's some friction on it, this guy tends to want to walk on the surface. When you hit the surface, it says, okay, I'm, you know, it's starting to move out because of it. Um, so I had to come back in and re-polish this guy with 5,000 grit sandpaper and some different compounds and stuff. So um, I guess so much for this project. Um, again, I don't know if I'd recommend doing it. I've seen some videos on people making them and they, they come out nice. I'm not sure what the secret is. Maybe I have too much force in the spring here, which is why it's not moving out far enough. Actually, yeah, it should have moved further than that. I've got quite a bit of room in here to move, yeah. Why is it, yeah, I can move that way, that way, that, and that, yeah. So, I don't know, so that's, that's that.